chase smoke and weed, I'm blunt and know this thing is done, ain't me like Jesus first. I eat a dollar, I got key consumption, super saying wanna be, I ain't gonna be no buzzer, fuck your family, they ugly. You can keep your cousin, most people puzzling. You want my time, it's about an hour and I need a hundred. I see your ship and see a sunken, missing me, she keep on cutting, she a keeper, love that hot box, I be my bucket. My demon, she seen a sucker, she bring me, need me, so fuck it, if I'm wrong, I'll press hold the God calls. Bennett, Bennett, Nett. Bennett, Bennett, We're back! Welcome to the Shirts Off Podcast. How dare you? How dare you? I've Welcome back. Hey, 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 enough. <laughs> you know what this time is. This is the first one back. You can't do this. We're back! Welcome to the Shirts Off Podcast, Season 2, Episode 105. Unlike normal shows with multiple seasons, we shall be going straight from Season 2, Episode 104, right into Season 2, Episode 105. That's right. When we take a month off, it means absolutely nothing. <laughs> with that addressed, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll notice that this is the first video in a while and that it is a jump in the numbers. That is because YouTube wouldn't let us upload one of our videos for reasons that will not be discussed for fear of them taking it down again. With that addressed, we will be looking at new outlets and placing... And places to put the podcast going forward. Haven't done this in a while, sorry. <laughs> See <you> later <laughs> episodes for updates on this. Now, for your regular, regularly scheduled programming. Wow, I'm out of practice. Are you okay? I'm okay. You need to take a breath. It's, Why uh, can't I hear br- anything? Is, <laughs> is it plugged in? <laughs> oh, hold on. Let me finish typing okay. or reading. Type God, reading. I'm, dude, that's too early for this. My mic is rusted. Now for your regularly <laughs> scheduled <laughs> programming. Two idiots making fun of each other for an hour, wondering why anyone is watching. Yeah. But first, the weather in Brown County, Indiana. Wait, whoa. God, just There's no punctuation in this? I'm fucking it losing. It is working. I, this is the first time I've ever worn a beanie with one of these, so it kind of <laughs> sounds like it's not working. The I'm w- hooked up. I'm good. I'm here. The weather in Brown County, Indiana is 46 degrees. Precipitation that's, that's is 0%. Racist. The humidity is 32%. No, it isn't. The wind is a <laughs> whopping three miles per hour. Creighton, you fucking maniac. We've all missed you. What is the word of the day? R. <laughs> the letter? <laughs> Maybe. The letter R? Do you want to know what it means? No. Oh, okay. Go ahead and tell us. <laughs> you know you want to. <laughs> What is the R 18th mean? letter in the English alphabet. Oh my god. <laughs> wait, wait, and the laziest way of writing the word R. A R E. <laughs> which is already a short. And it has it's the same amount of syllables. And then listen, listen. It has hashtag 18th letter, hashtag R, hashtag lazy. <laughs> so, you know. And I felt like it fit with today's theme of, you know, not putting in much effort. <laughs> How dare you? I put so much effort in. I'm just <laughs> bad at it because it's been a fucking m- five weeks <laughs> or whatever it's been. Uh, I did my waiting. Yeah, sh- the whole shit oh, shit's changed waiting. a lot in five weeks. Like we took some time off, and the GTA Six trailer <laughs> dropped, and Andre like, Brower know, died. Yeah, fucking the world is a sadder, happier place. <laughs> I feel like we can be blamed for a lot of that. Us not being live. Yeah, we're the reason. I I kind of you know I'm what? gonna switch out my mic because I don't like the taste of rust. Okay, I'm <laughs> gonna go just switch it with. You should switch it with the parrot mic because that's the one. Okay, you're not. You're not gonna do that. You're just gonna switch with the closest to you that other people use. Cool. That's cool. 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 To reference Andre Brower, what? No, I'm blind. I can't see. That's too dark in here. Your mouth has been on this. I don't wanna hold it. Oh yeah, that's rusty. All right. We are literally rusty. <laughs> to be, f- yeah, we are figuratively and literally rusty at the podcast. <laughs> I mean, Scar, hello. By the way, hello. Hello, <laughs> Scar. <laughs> Sorry, we, we we literally weren't a well-oiled machine before, and, now <laughs> and it's we even are worse. somehow <laughs> less well-oiled. <laughs> we are less oiled than before. And I'm going through my beanie phase, mostly <laughs> because you don't have a heater and it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> I do have one. It's just upstairs in my bathroom because yeah. the whole I, house doesn't have I heat. took it off when I got in here, and I was like, ooh, this is chilly. <laughs> so this like, is a very big house. And I'm beside the window now, so it's like it's extra cold yeah. over here. You're over there like with machines and shit running on you. I have one laptop with no fan. 
and <laughs> over here next to I'm in the winter side. I'm on the other side of the wall in Game of Thrones. This house, no one will ever understand because <laughs> it's a podcast and they can't obviously walk through the screen and be here. But this yeah. house is enormous. Yeah. And for a, an enormous, such a big house, there is no heat in this house. <laughs> it's There's nothing but fucking and space And the worst heater. part is, like, it's really well insulated. Yeah. So even a, on, like, a warm day, it's that cold really cold from stay. the freezing night. Yeah. <laughs> Like it's nice. It's nice that. outside. It's not freezing cold, but it's nice outside, and it's still fucking cold in here. And we're in a basement. We're in the lowest part of this house, <laughs> the lowest, coldest part of the house. That floods sometimes. <laughs> that does. Fall. I'm Allegedly. amazed it didn't flood the other day I when know. it rained, I dude. Know. I just knew. I just knew I was coming yeah. home to fucking yeah. dredge water out of a mm-hmm. cold basement. You know how like sad I was. Oh, I, just, I was. I sad was walking. For you. I was walking through the. Fr- I didn't even look at the the driveway for fear. I was like, if it isn't flooded, I don't want there to be foreshadowing. <laughs> Because it's already wet, and like if it's not flooded now, that doesn't mean it didn't That's flood what earlier. Saying, by the way. Okay, yeah. and I just I was like I walked down the stairs so slowly, I just had my hands on the walls, my eyes were closed. I was like, please, just please, just please. And I walked down, and I looked, and I was like, that it's doesn't dry. That doesn't look like water. And I, <laughs> I walked, and I checked. I went over there, and I like, got all the way up against the wall to yeah. check to see if it like even seeped in from the back. I was yeah. like, there's no water. Mm-hmm. This is amazing. Well, it <laughs> takes a lot to get the downstairs wet, Charlie. You know what I mean. It sure does. Lots of uh, lots of stimulation from all sides. Exactly. <laughs> lots of moisture coming from all directions. It's hilarious because it's actually like literally true in the case of this basement. Exactly. Because <laughs> it doesn't flood from one spot. Like mm-hmm. all the wa- when it floods in here, it's not because all the water came through that door. It's because the water came from that door and in there and through that drain <laughs> and through the back basement and through the stairs. <laughs> like it's fucking stupid. <laughs> this this property is a pit. <laughs> we have to fix it. And we're going to soon. You should just seal it. Like, you know, run caulk all the way around. Yeah. And then run if caulk. you caulk it up good, it'll stay dry. Right. I'm pretty sure I read that on a bumper sticker somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> or a fortune cookie. <laughs> if you caulk it up good, it'll stay dry. <laughs> Fuck, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about becoming an Etsy artist. D- w- what would you make? Uh, I would make epoxy weed trays with Pokemon cards inside them. Oh, that's cool. I'd get weed trays. Not really nice ones, right? Like, just kind of like... I might make nice ones. No, I mean, like, not really, like, rare cards, right? Well, so that would be the... That would be, like, the defining quality of the price of some of them. So, like, I would have some that are just themed off of, like, elements. Like, there might be a board that's, like, electric-type Pokemon for people who fuck with electric-type Pokemon. Or I might have one that's all Pikachus. That would be a little more expensive because it's all one... It takes a lot more... Uh, How big are these? I mean, they're weed trays. They're probably like yeah. 16 inches wide, yeah. 10 inches tall, something like that. You never know. I don't know. I'm thinking about what I would do if I did it would bl- be to like order in mass, order like a ridiculous amount all at once to save and then open an LLC so I can write all of that off also. Ooh. And, ah. then, and then start making these. I need to learn how to do the epoxy. That's I the part I need is to Is that do. what you were asking me and Quentin for or about? Uh, yeah, because... <coughs> I want to go to HeroCon again, but I'd rather just get a three-day pass and oh. us all stay there. <laughs> and yeah. just like where where was HeroCon at? I it's in Charlotte. Remember. Oh, okay. Charlotte. You didn't you go? No. You didn't go this time. No. I'm going to Ichiban. Are you going to Ichiban? Probably not. Why not? Because I had a really bad couple of weeks there uh, in Cherokee. And Wait, so that bankrupted you out of going? I d- to it didn't bankrupt me, but it de- like, I'd have to have a pretty significant, incredible two weeks going forward <laughs> <laughs> to uh, even <laughs> contemplate. <laughs> the bond isn't even that expensive. <sighs> I understand, but it's the time that I would be taking off. Oh, that, that all of a I understand. Is, so, like, yeah. you're trying to like, like, I gotta build, for I gotta build my, I gotta you know. build my bankroll back up. Yeah. Uh, okay. Like, there's money in the bank from that those winnings that I just will not touch. Yeah. But then there's money that I have, and l- you're and like, I need to survive. Well, yeah, that my cash is the money I don't want to like that I use, and I need to build that money back up as a bankroll for poker, and uh, I'm because my goal is going forward, not to spend any money, out of my account, uh-huh. like on poker. Yeah. Only spend cash on poker. I get. So like even my tournaments like in February and then in May, in Cherokee, 
like I want to be able to do all of that with the cash that I have, so I have to build that cash back up. Are you gonna do? Are you gonna play poker with your fives and ones thing? No, <laughs> no, oh, that okay. doesn't. That's different. That's oh, okay. a whole separate. I was gonna <laughs> say like because I know that you if have anything, a system. That's, if anything, that's my bank. And that's the money that'll go back in the bank. I I know we're big on talking finance on the Shirt Soft podcast. <laughs> so yeah, like, sure, we sure I are. I didn't know if you wanted to talk about um, you know, kind of like your methods, or how deep you wanted to get into your methods. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I mean it's 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 a big part of poker, not just not just like finances in general, but like for poker specifically, money management is important. What like yeah. at the table and off the table. Like you need to go to a game with an amount of money you're willing to willing to lose. Like you don't want to go with too much money that would hurt to lose. You want to go with like an amount that you're comfortable losing. Like if you had to lose money, how much like of a loss can you take and it not like mess you up? That's a big that's an important part of how you look at it. Like, if I go to a game and I plan on buying in for $400, mm-hmm. I n- probably need to take $1,500 with me in case I lose that first buy-in. Right. Because you want to shoot another four or a five or a thousand, depending on how much is at the table. Like, well, there's so many different elements to we it. We were talking about this the other day because I told you, like, I don't really play poker. And don't I really? You mean no, never, I never have? have. <laughs> and I really would like to, but you don't want me to. But... The thing that does interest me about it is the numbers aspect about it. Like, you know, how much you go in with, how much the you come out with, the how only you way. strategize, you know, what you're going to, how you're going to play. Because not everybody plays the same, you know? And yeah, not, no, not everybody no budgets, it, budgets <laughs> the same. Yeah. I mean, you have some people that have no self control that would just blow it all. Yeah. And then I know. you got people like you that you're like, I got this section out for this thing. I got this section out for that thing. Like, you're very meticulous about it. And I think yeah, well, you have to be sometimes. I yeah, mean, yeah, and yeah, sometimes yeah. there's times where you don't have to be. There's times where I've had two grand and I'm like, well, there's <laughs> never going to be an opportunity for me to get this much at this time. Yeah. I got to shoot this two grand to these maniacs. Yeah. <laughs> and, try and, and try and hit. And, and that's I, cool. And like I've capitalized I, on it before. I think that. And I've, it's bit me in the ass, too. Though. I think that, like, if I were to write a book about poker, not knowing anything about it, and just summing up your words, I would do a horrible job at it. But at least it would be interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'd be like, he takes, you know, yada, 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 and, like, you know, plays cards. <laughs> <laughs> right. The only Look, the only time I would ever, ever even contemplate saying that you should play is if you watch the shit out of it for a long time, and then you and me sit down and play, and I see what you've got, like what I, you're capable of. I just but you should never, ever spend your money. No, no, no. I don't poker. even want to do that. I just want to play for funsies. It like that doesn't. That just doesn't happen. No, poker no. isn't a game you play for fun. You just can't. It's not one of the. It's not like play, sitting down to play Monopoly to learn. It's stakes are a part of the game. Yeah. Yeah. Like okay. you. Ca- it's so. It's so difficult to sit down and, I like. It, there's just. It's one of those things you can't understand it until you do it. Yeah. Like just playing for fun doesn't you at least need there to be something to if you just start off with the same amount of chips yeah. and you're you both put, you know, uh you're playing for the rights to something, then all of a sudden there's stakes. Yeah. That's the whole point of poker. I'm like, gonna get Mike to teach me how to play. Okay. Yeah, because <laughs> I know you won't. Um, don't get Mike to teach me. Why? Is he bad at it? He's not bad. He's unethical. <laughs> 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 Mike is a very aggressive player. Mike is not who you learn. Mike Mike plays the way he plays because he has a gambling problem. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to learn. <laughs> you don't need to learn from Mike. Mike's not going to teach you like the right kind of poker. He can. Mm. But he I, won't. I was looking. You know <laughs> he funny? will encourage bad behavior. While you were talking, I was looking at my notes uh, to see what all I put in here. Because I put a bunch of stuff in here. And some of it I don't remember. Yeah, me either. Honestly, I just don't even want to fucking look at it. Oh, wait, I do want to look at a, a little bit of it. <laughs> I, so, like, and I tried to pull up on my screen over here. It's not working. The one thing I do want to mention is I'm really concerned about Scream 7. And let me explain why. So often. No, no, no. Hold on. So often Creighton will start off one of his notes with, I'm very concerned about. And then it'll be a thing that I have zero interest, in. <laughs> interest or understanding of. Well, so no. now I'm going into this <laughs> conversation <laughs> knowing nothing. Well, no, look, I know you'll know nothing about this, but hear me out. It's like you'll find it interesting from like a studio perspective. Okay. Go you ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. So as long as I got to go ahead in your blessing. So they oh, wait. I I'm allowed to not give my blessing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm allowed to. It's veto? too late. You already gave it. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Anyways, so. 
the last two movies, they've been building up this main character that's the son of Billy Loomis, who's the killer in the first one. And I can't remember what the fuck the actress's name is. But she just got fired from the production of Scream 7 because she come out saying all this crazy shit about Palestine and everything like that because all this stuff is going on in Israel. And her sister in the movie is, is Jenna Ortega. Yeah. And she also just quit the production for it. Yeah. That's okay. like it's because she has similar views. Yes. And, uh, well, I think at the when I first read about it, she was saying she had scheduling conflict with it. But, like, I think it's since come out that she has similar views as well. And now it's like, that movie's fucked. Those are your two main characters. And they, like, heavily, like, Scream 6, they really heavily built up that, uh, What's her face? The Billy Loomis's daughter is gonna be like a killer in the next one, and that was fucked. They don't have any any characters they can bring because they've killed off Dewey. Um, they don't have what's her face that played Sydney Prescott or for a long time. Uh, Ned Campbell, she's not coming back because they won't pay her enough. So I, I'm really sad because I was interested to see where the story was gonna go. Yeah, and now there's just there's nothing. It's that whole conversation film. was nothing to no, me. But look, I'm just telling you, like, just you ever watch I just a, saw black. You ever <laughs> watch... <laughs> this doesn't happen for you because you... Well, it's starting to happen for you because you're a huge fan of Marvel, but, like, I just watched one of my favorite franchises just basically fall apart because You've of been doing that with Transformers for 20 years. Yeah, but it's different. <laughs> Transformers always comes back. You know why? Because <laughs> they transform and evolve. Whoa! Whoa. That was really f- clever and smart. Thank you. you. Good Thank job. You. Thank you. Fuck you. It's different. When it's a <laughs> horror franchise, horror franchises are so weird. Like Halloween, Halloween like had a great ending. I, you just, I'm did you just say it's starting to happen with me because of Marvel? Yeah, <laughs> they're forty movies deep. They're forty, 40 movies <laughs> over deep. fifteen years. But they haven't. They're, this past year sucked <laughs> for them. Aside from Guardians of the Galaxy three, only in the box office. Wait till we yeah, see those. Yeah, that's where it numbers. matters, though. Not, not really. Not with Disney Plus. They they have a lot of streaming. Disney numbers Plus that do is well. killing them. If they like, they're oversaturating the market. I love all. It's of it. too much. It's too much to keep up with. Even I don't watch all that shit, and I'm an obs- obsessive person. No, you're not. I am when not I love something a lot. Not about Marvel. Yeah, not about Marvel. Though. I I've never it. been obsessive about Marvel except for like. A you're not even obsessive about Star Wars anymore. Yeah. I am obsessed. You wait way too long to watch. All I have stuff not. Now. Yeah, you did. It took you fucking I four and a half a months to watch Andor. I took a break. I'm back. Is I'm he back, comparing baby. Scream to the Marvel franchise? I am. He's, yes, he's comparing it in the fact that one is now being basically destroyed from the inside. He's comparing that to Marvel, wi- yeah. who, after all of their terrible shit, three days later announced a season two for six of their shows that are all going to continue on Disney Plus uh, and gross. a bunch of projects, uh, like the movie projects that that's are gross. still unchanging. The only thing I want to see is Armor Wars. Well, that's all you want to see. I want to see it all. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I fucking eat it. Well, I like S.H.I.E.L.D. I like yeah. all of it. Well, <laughs> I've disliked two MCU projects in 15 years. I want to see more Moon Knight. I would like to see Moon Knight. I bring right. Sadly, Andy I think three. that's one of the ones that they're not doing a season two of. What? I think. I'm not sure. Why? I don't they know. Teased, they teased I it agree. up so well. I agree. I'm with you. I think that show should have fucking ten seasons. That's one of the greatest things they've ever made, except for the last episode. But aside from that but last like episode. But the last <laughs> episode is just like, you know, it's it really suffers from the same up. thing. It's the set up for the next thing. Well, now I'm really sad, and I don't want to keep watching Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I will watch it. <laughs> Forever. Except for, uh, like I said, they're Deadpool 3 <laughs> and whatever they do with the X-Men. Between Marvel, Marvel is what I always wanted as a and little kid. Fantastic Four. Because, like, my dad, my dad would let us stay home from yeah. school to watch certain, like, uh, events. Like, yeah, like movie universes. Like, we would sit and watch, we watched Back to the Future 1, 2, and 3 all in one sitting. As you should have. Yeah, and we, w- and we were like, this is the greatest thing that's ever existed. I still can't believe that. <laughs> and, like, Need the Weapon 1, 2, 3, and 4. We I've watched never all seen any of those. They're great. We watched all four of those on a school day. Just w- didn't go to school. <laughs> and my dad was He's like, like Let's this watch. is more important. This, this is more is important. cultural. Well, yeah. well, what happened was it was like 9 p.m. and we watched the first one, and he was like, man, that one's so good. You want to watch the second one? And I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> and he was like, fuck it, you're not going to school tomorrow. And we watched all four. <laughs> it like into the morning. <laughs> it was fucking awesome. It was very irresponsible, but it was great. And like now, like my dad, imagine how cool having kids, like it is to show them Back to the Future. How cool it is to show them Jurassic Park. Like these things that you had to sit and wait two, three years in between each movie, like which to him was this crazy holy shit thing. We've got 40 of those. We have a giant universe. Like from the time my kids turn six, I'll be able to go, son. 
sit down. <laughs> we are about to start a journey of which there is no turning back. <laughs> <laughs> and we are going to sit down and we are going to watch the MCU. All the way through. <laughs> I <laughs> not in one sitting. Clearly, that would be ridiculous. Yeah. Do you remember <laughs> when like you could do that though? Yeah, there was a time. There was a time. When Avengers two, when Age of Ultron came out, some theaters were doing a marathon where mm-hmm. you could watch all the MCU movies up into Avengers. I Age think Ultron. they it had was to like stop. Basically, a long weekend. I think they ha- yeah. I think they had to stop doing it. Well, no, not even. It's not that many. Ultron, no, but you could do way, it in one day. <laughs> the way they did it, it was basically like a long weekend. Like oh, okay. You, like like you they would wouldn't do it back Friday. to back to back. Like literally back to back. Yeah. You would start on Friday with, I think, the first phase like five of movies. Or something. Yeah. And then Saturday would be catching up on phase two. And then Sunday would be Ultron. 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 Yeah. Not a long weekend. Uh, just a regular weekend. Yeah. Long weekend's like <laughs> two, <Monday>. days. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> two days. Two I think, days. I think that uh, the, the big, big marathons that they could do. It'd uh, be like a week. Probably, now, right? yeah, now yeah. it would be maybe longer than that. If you to, just do the movies. Yeah, I was going to say, now to truly do it, like, it's getting to the point where to keep up with the movies, you got to watch these shows. Yeah. <laughs> like, like uh, Multiverse of Madness makes no sense if you didn't watch WandaVision. Yeah. It, I mean, it makes a little, but, man, it makes so l- much less sense. <laughs> like, it's crazy. And now Ms. M- the Marvels, too, which yeah. was fucking awesome. Well, I don't know. I didn't watch Ms. Marvel, and I still kind of pretty much understood what was going on. What does the parrot have to say about it? The, look, the parrot rarely speaks, but when he does, he does. So yeah. the, we, it's just one of those His things. His name's we have Jerome. To, we have I to thought wait. we muted him because he was racist. Well, he is a little. Jerome is quite racist, so we have to we have to check him, and uh, he has to he texts us when he has something to say. So you know, just very occasionally, he says some stuff, but we uh, we are not allowing him to speak unless he messes. He texts us on our phones yep. when he wants to have an opinion. He shoots us a message. He has an opinion on everything. <laughs> Trust us on that. Yeah. But he's a piece of shit, mm-hmm. and he knows it. You and know it. Go fuck yourself. He's only got Melissa's credentials there because sometimes she's here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <coughs> but to be uh, fair, we didn't message her at all about today. No, we did we not. We could have, but we just. We definitely could have. We didn't even think we about it. We didn't even think about <laughs> it until this moment. We are terrible. I thought about we are it. terrible co-hosts. I thought about to it earlier this morning. To be fair, she lives an hour from here now. I thought about it early this morning, and I was like, uh Mm-hmm. And I feel like she was going to be like, oh, I have to work at the groomers today. Just push it to this evening. And then you have to work this evening. Yep. And, and then we'll it would just never happen. Yeah, you know. But, you know. I you think they're in a great place. I think they're in a great place. They're making money. Because here's, here's what people are saying. Like, mm, it lost all this money. You know how much money they've made? Yeah. They're, they're, they're building a story on borrowed money, like yeah. on, on one money. This money is earned money. They are building their story out. They're going to lose every now and then. It's like poker. Yeah. It like really is. <laughs> you could, If you play a cash you're game not at all seven like days a week, you're, you're not going to win all seven. You want to, but you have to be okay losing a buy-in every now and again. You're not at all like fatigued just a little bit from it? No, yeah. I love it. I, ju- See, I do love it. That's my issue is like I'm, a, I'm an I optimist. I had to take after Kenobi – and I'm going to use Star Wars as a reference for this. Yeah, because Star like, Wars is getting to the MCU yeah, level. Yeah, So It was already on its way. After but Kenobi, I just wanted to take a break. I was like, you know, Kenobi was okay. It wasn't as great as I wanted it Kenobi to be. Kenobi could have been the last two episodes of Kenobi. Keno- yeah. And it would have been perfect. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, like the first episode and the last two episodes is all we needed. We it, got way too many episodes. It should have been show. a movie. Yeah. So it should have booked a book. Well, it was, suppo- was going to be. I that's know. That's the craziest thing. It's fucking the solo movie did bad. And they were like, oh, we got to fix this. No, yeah. you didn't. Solo, first off, was actually pretty good. Not a bad movie. No. <laughs> very fun, movie. very fun, fun, very good movie. movie. People like to talk shit about the droid, but, like, really, if you take that out, I mean, it's only, like, tw- like maybe 5% of that is that droid. The girl droid? Yeah. I didn't even Be- mind the well, droid. Well, no, I don't mind her either, yeah. but there are people that are out there, because I watched uh, somebody I really like the, the idea of that droid's character being, like, why the Millennium Falcon is special. Yeah. Like, that was fucking cool. And I love, I mean, I love all the fucking side characters. Woody Harrelson comes in and is like, boom, Star Wars. Yeah. Dick on the table. Yeah. Like, kills it. It's one of the greatest, oh, I know. greatest I know. Uh, fucking uh, anti hero characters of the whole fucking and their, franchise. And their little, like, backstory with that little crew of people mm-hmm. that just, you know, just dies. Fucking Suicide Squads. Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. It reminded me a lot of Halo Reach. Yeah. Honestly. Very much. No, for real. <laughs> <laughs> Very much. I so. was like, oh, it's one of those stories. Because like when and you're first watching it, you're kind of like, this. Oh, this is just gonna be the whole movie. Them riding around this crew and doing like crazy shit. The problem with that movie is it came ar- out around the time that Last Jedi. No, well, sure, but it really what happened is it's too close <coughs> to it. It was a butterfly effect. 
what happened is Game of Thrones Season 8 came out and bombed. Everyone hated it, and they blamed those writers. Yeah. Well, those writers were slated to make the next six Star Wars movies, and they were going to be some of the best content ever made because those guys are good at adapting, not yeah. writing. Yeah. They're not good at uh, writing original stuff. When it came to Game of Thrones, they were adapting some of the best fiction of all time, and everyone got mad at them for having to finish the best story ever written that they <laughs> didn't write. And then they were like, oh, these guys are going to do Star Wars? Uh-uh-uh. But no, they were going to fucking adapt Star Wars. They were going to make amazing Star Wars from Star Wars Legends, the fucking rest of the comics, mm -hmm. other written material, other material that already existed, stuff that they could adapt. <laughs> it was going to be awesome. And then they were like, no, this went bad. Last Jedi went bad. we got to scrap all these movies and rethink what we're about to do because we were about to mess up. <laughs> yeah. Cancel culture killed Obi-Wan the movie, which would have been an amazing and movie. And made the show suck. And made the show suck. And by Look, little Leia, Boba Fett little Leia was great. The little the kid who played yeah. her, she was great. They she was probably moments, they, they do. She probably was the shining light of all the bad of that show. Yeah. Because that was a great kid and actress. People talk shit on her, too. They're like, oh, rather it be Luke. And I'm like, well, it doesn't really make sense that it's Luke. You know exactly, I mean? yeah. It was, it was great in moments, but most of that show was bland and boring. Yeah. It was a good first episode, a great last two episodes. Excuse me. Um, but it wasn't terrible. No. Like, Star Wars at, at I like in its hole right now is amazing. Ahsoka's incredible. Andor's incredible. Yeah. Andor's, <laughs> Andor and Andor's probably, like, the best. Though. Andor oh, might too. be the greatest piece of cinema in Star Wars, <laughs> technically. <laughs> like, like forget Rogue that, One's pretty good, too. Rogue One is pretty good, but, but forget that it's Star Wars for a second. Yeah. Andor's its own. Andor got an Emmy nomination for Best Drama. Yeah. Andor is different. <laughs> Andor, Andor is built, is built different. different, dude. Yeah. Andor is a fucking incredible show. Fucking, uh, what's her name? Uh, Mon Mothma got a nom not an Emmy nomination, sadly, which she deserved. Yeah. Mon Mothma in Andor is one of the is probably the best acting performance in the entire Star which Wars franchise. Which is crazy franchise. because isn't that the same one from Episode Three? Like it's the I same so. actor? In area, or uh, yeah. Let me double check, but. I'm pretty sure. But and the crazy part is she's in Ahsoka, too. Like, you know. Yeah, well, the, the, the really, no, that's not what's crazy. The crazy part is, is that this show is based on a guy we watched die at the end of a Star Wars movie. It's a prequel on his character that no one, he wasn't even the main character of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> they did a whole season of a show about it, and it was fucking awesome. Every episode of this show is fucking incredible. I would, whenever I first saw it, I was like, who cares about Andor? And yeah, so now no I'm, one. And now I'm like, Ooh, more Andor? <laughs> There's more Andor. <laughs> like, it's the best. It's not even close that it's the and best And now one. I'm, like, really, like, I want to watch The Acolyte because I'm, like. Yeah, I, I want to watch all of it. I'm more excited about the future of Star Wars TV than uh, any yeah. of the movies. Fuck all the movies. Yeah. Like, they're doing more Ray movies? Okay. <laughs> like, I don't want to watch. I will. I was a little confused by that news. I was, like, more Ray. I mean, Ray's good. I like Ray as a character. I do like Ray the character. I think that people shit on her way too much. When did episode three come out? 2005? Yeah. Yeah, she played Mon Mothma all the way to 2005. She played Mon Mothma 18 years ago. And, like, and hey now man. she's Mon Mothma again. She's playing Mon Mothma again. Which is almost correct timeline-wise, if you think about it. Not re... I mean, I guess, yeah, close. It's yeah, close. Because it's like... It, we're like 10, 11 BBY? years in. I don't know. I don't no, know 19 BBY is when the Battle of Yavin happens. How far into that is Andor? I don't know how far Andor. Oh, no, not 19 BBY. What the hell am I saying? Like BBY. I'm a nerd. I'm a Star Wars nerd. I'm not a nerd in that I know the timeline very so well. So, all of Andor, I think, is like so far. All of Andor has been like a couple years before Rogue One. Like, yeah. But only like three or four. Yeah, it's like we're like getting there. We're almost there. Yeah. So, and everybody does the timeline based on the Battle of Yavin. So when they ever like you know where they blew up the Death Star, yeah. so you have like A B B Y and B B B Y or A B Y. After the battle, battle after of the battle of Yavin, BBY. before battle of Yavin. Yeah. Okay. So, Revenge of the Sith is nineteen BBY. <laughs> okay. And then you know, so we're right. so if she's like right there at it, and it's been like you know eighteen years since two thousand and five, you know, it's pretty close. She's probably like the most accurately aged Star Wars person. Yes. <gasps> What's going on? Well, oh, well, well, relax. Like Calm down. Everything's okay. Your, uh, Crane's no. laptop is freaking out. Yeah, he's having go. trouble. All right, we're good. Okay, we're good. <coughs> I've Josh Peck so was is in he be in Star Wars. No, he oh. was in Oppenheimer. <laughs> <laughs> Just reading the notes. I, I for the life of me, I was walking around the circle where yeah. I, I live on a circle. Yeah. I was walking around the circle. He and hits the button. He detonates it. No, during that's the not, test. That's not what he did. 
Yeah. No. Didn't he's he? he's in charge of the fail safe. Uh, he had to click the abort button if the levels were reading the right thing. He was in charge of fucking the abort button for the what's the word? There's something par- like that's part of the reaction you of the it. nuclear bomb Sounded that he only he was like the pro. He was like yeah. the most professional of that thing. Uh, his character and he Prolific. was there. No, that's <laughs> you're just saying words you don't know. <laughs> Pro life. <laughs> anyway, yeah, he's an Oppenheimer, and Even for the life of me, I can't remember why I wanted to say that. This is a fucking a week. ago. Is it because like whenever this he was, was talking w- about the game sphere on Drake and Josh, it made you think of the bomb? No, it was nothing to do with Drake and Josh. I do love Drake and Josh. I do too. I was walking around the circle, and I was like, Josh Peck's an Oppenheimer, and this, like this. Here's my. I'm yeah. trying to. I'm trying to shake the memory. Out of my head. What is weird? <laughs> about he's only in it for like a little bit. He's not yeah, he's only in it like that's the a crazy couple of part times. about Oppenheimer. Like you have some like Rami Malek level actors in it for like 15 minutes, and then there's also just Josh Peck, <laughs> which yeah. he's not like a bad actor. I'm just yeah. saying, like I mean, he's, Ma- not, he's Rami definitely Malek. No, he's no Oscar winner, but yeah. like you know, he picked his moment. It's really crazy that he's in Oppenheimer. Rami Malek's won like some like. He won an oh, Oscar. Yeah, won an Oscar and for stuff. Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, so like you know, Gary Oldman just won for and Darkest Gary Oldman's Hour. in it. Yeah, so Gary it's Oldman, like Casey Affleck. There are three of there are three of the past ten years lead actor winners for Oscars in this movie in for five minutes each, <laughs> yeah. if that. Like they're yeah. in for a moment, which is great. And I mean, all three times, it's just like, so out of nowhere. Leads You're like, up to them shit. like it's a big moment, yeah. and and it fucking works like yeah. it, it fucking I mean, it is there it's are a big full moments. Sen- yeah they are yeah. big moments well it's not just that they're big moments they're big moments and the movie knows they're big moments like christopher nolan knows in these moments like we're about to lead up we're not going to show their face right away you're going to be like who the fuck is this yeah. and then you're going to be like oh shit is this motherfucker and then they're going to have some crazy information <laughs> and it's going to be awesome <laughs> Fucking like Casey Affleck shows up as a fucking communist killing Bolshe- Bolshevik fighting Russian born Jew <laughs> who is like investigating Oppenheimer for being a communist. <laughs> fucking Gary Oldman shows up and is the fucking president. <laughs> He's Truman and basically calls Oppenheimer a little bitch to his face <laughs> and tells him to get out of the Oval <laughs> Office. And then Rami Malik shows up as the fucking scientist, the only scientist that in the movie before that moment Oppenheimer has been like blatantly disrespectful to. So it's like a very big like heel switch yeah. on w- how you it's would imagine. It's a twist because you think he's going to say something against Oppenheimer on behalf of Louis Strauss, uh-huh. but in to the total the opposite direction, he's a scientist yeah. and is using logic and, and he reason. And blocks the fuck out of He's Strauss. using logic and reason and his like understanding of Oppenheimer as a human, not as the guy he interacted with, yeah. as a human with ideas and perspective to fight against Louis Strauss for being a piece of shit. Like, it's just, in all three times, they fucking kill it. And then Josh Peck's in it, too. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Josh Peck's in this movie. <laughs> you know what's going to be crazy? Like, if Josh Peck, you know, makes it big, becomes like an Oscar-winning actor, oh and Miranda Cosgrove's just in one of his movies. <laughs> and he's like, make him. <laughs> that would be funny. I love I love Josh Peck. It's m- Moments like that in that movie make me see him and go, I've watched this guy in, like, 90 David Dobrik videos. <laughs> Like I know him more from David Dobrik than I do Josh Drake and Josh anymore. Yeah. And he's a silly guy. He says yeah. some crazy shit. He's like a silly, funny yeah. person, and does these crazy things. And but then, he's like, and I then can here also he is, act. Yeah. Every once in a while, he's like, let me let me shake off yeah. the old acting boots and go be in a Chris Nolan movie. <laughs> <laughs> let me go. Let me go be an Oppenheimer for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> and like, kind of. You think he's just marking them off like really famous directors that he's like can be in their movies? Like next is up. Uh, like what's his name? Martin uh, Scorsese yeah, or something. Scott yeah. Scorsese. <laughs> <laughs> just slowly but surely, he just makes his way through yeah. the like the, the top <laughs> directors as like background characters. <laughs> That's what happened with Florence Pugh in this movie. Yeah, she was like Chris Nolan was like, look, this role is. Uh, it's tough. You're it's naked. Like, <laughs> you're gonna be naked. It's very. It's a very like bl- like he was saying the, all the parts that are gonna be rough about it. Yeah. And because that's the first rated R movie he's made uh, with like nude scenes like that. Yeah. Like that's theatrical. And uh, she was like, I don't give. A, I'll serve coffee in the background. This is a Chris Nolan movie. <laughs> she was like, I don't give a fuck. And then she gives a fucking one of the best performances of the year too. She might like. I think she's on the screen just enough to not get the nomination for Best Supporting yeah. Actress, but I also could totally see her getting a Best Supporting Actress nomination. She was great in it. She's great. Emily Blunt's Emily Blunt. I mean, Emily Blunt's always great, though. She's always great, but like, in th- this might finally get her an Oscar nomination. She, she doesn't deserves ha- it. She has no Oscar nominations. 
You know who else doesn't have a single Oscar nomination? This is going to blow your mind. Who? Paul Dano has zero Oscar nominations. Really? Paul Dano from Prisoners, 12 Years a Slave, The Fablemans. I think The Fablemans was his first one. I think, did he even get nominated? Hold on. (laughs) Paul Dano, IMDb. Because I'm I'm about to freak. I'm, I'm pretty sure I read this. Does he have no? Yeah, he has an Emmy nomination. That's it. He has one primetime Emmy nomination. He didn't even get nominated for the Fablemans, fucking Prisoners, Swiss Army Man, which was underseen at the time, but like is still amazing. Love and Mercy. He's in Love and Mercy. He's in Love and Mercy. You don't even know what Love and Mercy is. No, nope. don't pretend. I don't. You silly, silly goose. What is Love and Mercy? Oh, it was a TV movie. That's why he got nominated for that. For that Academy of Science Fiction, The Batman. He got a nomination for that, but not the fucking not the Oscars. Like this guy. Little Miss Sunshine, Love and Mercy, 12 Years a Slave, There Will Be Blood. Dude, he's one of the best. I don't even like There Will Be Blood as a film, and he's amazing in it. <laughs> Why don't you like There Will Be Blood? I don't know. I d- I've watched it four times. I hate it. I just can't. I don't enjoy it at all as a movie. Like, it's it's got probably the best acting performance of all time <laughs> in it, <laughs> and, like, I agree with that. I think it's one of the greatest act- acting performances ever, and that's why he won the Oscar. But I personally, me, the person, human being Charlie, does not like that movie. I don't enjoy watching it. <laughs> There's one scene in that movie that I like to watch. Which movie? There will be blood. No, I mean which. I mean, sorry, not which movie. Which scene? The final scene with him and Paul. D- have you seen it? No. <sighs> then why are you asking? Why no, do you ask these? I was ones? asking which one to watch. Look up later. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what the movie is at all? Nope. <laughs> Probably something about blood. No. Is it a western? Kind of. Yeah. It sounds like a western. It's a Paul Thomas. Anderson is Westworld good? The first season's amazing. <laughs> is it just the first season? I didn't watch any more. Uh, <laughs> but apparently, apparently, nobody apparently else it either. is not. Yeah, apparently it is not much better after season one. Hmm. That's a shame. Yeah. But um, with that said. I hope that doesn't happen to Andor. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it will. Uh, what if season two there is like, yeah, it's just Rogue One. Watch Rogue One. <laughs> <laughs> the next episode is Rogue One. <laughs> watch uh, Star Wars Rogue One. <laughs> But um no um I can't believe the doctor from the Avengers is in it and is actually pretty awesome. The doctor from the yeah. Avengers? I can't remember his name in either of those projects. Wait. <laughs> in the movie Rogue One or Andor? In Andor. Which doctor? He's Who like the spy. About? He's the pawn shop dude. Oh, Luthen? <laughs> yeah, Luthen. <laughs> there we go. He's Luthen in Andor and in uh that could have been his name in the Avengers too. I wouldn't know the difference. It's Dr. Luthen in the <laughs> Avengers. <laughs> no, in the Avengers, it's, uh, fuck, I did know it. I used to know it. <laughs> See what I mean? Yeah, it's been Over a while. So it's been a long time since I watched any and of the movies he's in. It's been a long time since he's been in. <laughs> yeah. He might be dead. <laughs> kind of like how Shia LaBeouf's dead. Like, uh, oh, yeah. With Wiki, Sam with Wiki's dead in the Transformers franchise, technically, I'm the last according to words said. <laughs> yeah. What's Sam Witwicky is canonically dead. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? Killed him. Uh, fucking uh, Sir Anthony Hopkins. Yeah, he just he just went and wiped him out. He wanted to be the last words. of the line. Uh, have you watched Cosmonauts' new Batman video? No. He's doing a part one, part t- who knows how many parts. Of the Batman? All, all of them. He's going to rank all the Batman movies oh, ever. Oh, yeah, The first boy. video is all the bad ones. <laughs> There's so many bad and, ones. Well, yeah, they're not all Does bad. Does it include animated, too, or just N- live action? Uh, movies that made it to theater. Theatrical released movies. Oh, but there's so many good ones that didn't make. That's it too there. bad. He's and he wow. says that he's like, I know, I know. There's a lot, but this video would be 25 hours long <laughs> if he did if I did all the good and bad movies. <laughs> so everything that is theatrically well, really, released, like the good animated ones, far outdo any of even the best live action. The only one that's even come close that's like a good live action Batman is the Batman, and still, I, th- in my opinion, Mask of the Phantasm still outranks that one. Yeah. Well, in the first video, it's uh, all movies reviewed part one. It's Batman 66, 89, Batman we did Returns. 66? Batman Returns, Batman Forever, and Batman and Robin. That's the first five videos. Wow. There's the only five, like two movies. good ones in that. Well, three technically if you count back to Batman 66. <laughs> he, and he does. Okay. He's like, there's look, like only three He's like, good you got to love this for what it is, not for what it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, this movie's kind of well, like kind of awesome. <laughs> Batman 66 gets a pass all the time. Honestly. You know what they need to do? They just need to f- be like, fuck it, and redo Batman 66. But it would be like... It would be so bad. 
it would be like, no one today would like that. That movie could no, only come out when it came out. But like, it would be fun. You know what I mean? And I see so many comic book movies now that are so like. Crane, that movie's fifty-seven years old. No one's gonna like it anymore. Well, no, but you could do like you no, know you couldn't. a parody. Too many bad guys. Have you seen the Christmas? Too many thing? bad guys that are not good. It's not gonna. That's be good. why it's a parody. Could you imagine? But they you don't do it anymore. They don't do Mike parodies Myers anymore. Mike Myers to be Batman. <laughs> Mike Myers would have to be the Joker. <laughs> get Kevin Hart to be Robin. <laughs> Kevin Hart could be Robin. Kevin Hart would be an amazing Robin to <laughs> Michael Myers as Batman. Or The Rock. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> See what the I Rock mean? Is People would watch No, it. what would actually be amazing is if Kevin Hart was Batman and The Rock was Robin. <laughs> 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 that would be better. <laughs> and they recreated Batman 66. Now, now, you're starting to get me on board See what this. I mean? <laughs> Batman 66, but it's Kevin Hart <laughs> is Batman, <laughs> and Dwayne The Rock Johnson <laughs> is Robin. Who's okay? Okay, hold on. Let's talk this out. Who's the Joker now? All of a sudden, uh, Paul Dano. <laughs> no, like you go really he's, serious he's, for no reason. <laughs> no, that's too much. That's too. That's too topical because he's <laughs> just in a Batman movie. We can't touch other Batman actors. <laughs> we gotta, you gotta get somebody who's never been in one before. George Clooney. <laughs> Um, Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh no 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 <laughs> no! Not Leonardo DiCaprio. What's his name? Uh, uh, Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe could probably be an unironically incredible Joker. <laughs> 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 like, there's only a few people who could play the Joker. Well, like, the crazy thing about the Joker as a character is he's like he's just Oscar bait at well, this point. Like, because there have been yeah. how many live action Jokers? Yeah. Fucking. <laughs> well, two of them are Oscar winners. Think about it like this, though. Like There's a new the one who's a, who just wa- who just got nominated for an Oscar for a different movie. He's about to be the fucking Joker. We, All the live action Jokers, except for fucking sixty six, are Oscar nominated the, actors. The Lego Batman movie, Oscar winning actors, almost all of them. The Lego Batman movie works because the Joker, even though he's like you know uh, he's Zach Galifianakis, <laughs> which is hilarious, is. Still, kind of like serious, you know what I mean? No, I still haven't seen that movie. You've never seen it? No, dude. He doesn't count though because it's not live action. <laughs> wow. For what, what I'm talking you? about. That's a, oh, for what, what I'm saying. I'm, oh, what I'm yeah. saying is, other than the guy in '66, that live action Joker, every live action Joker now, even Barry Keegan from the new Batman movies, they're all Oscar winning actors. Or nominate uh, Barry Keegan's the only one, he, and he's only in five minutes. He's in a deleted scene for the Batman. He's already an Oscar-nominated actor. <laughs> he might become the next Oscar-winning Joker, because <laughs> the two Jokers that have won an Oscar for their roles won them for the Joker, and the other two are Oscar-winning actors. Jared Leto is an Oscar-winning actor. Jack Nicholson is an Oscar-winning actor. All live-action Jokers are Oscar-winning <laughs> actors. <laughs> Either for their portrayal as the Joker or for their other portrayals and yeah, also play things, the Joker. Yeah. They are all fucking top tier, upper echelon actors, especially in their careers at the time. What if Jack you just Nicholson. Get another, what if you just get another uh, Oscar winner to play? <laughs> well, he, Barry Keegan. I mean, he's, no, no, no. Barry he's an Keegan, Oscar winner. Sure. Uh, nominated but I'm talking actor. about for this. Like oh, f- oh, so yeah. we need another Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> like somebody has already won an Oscar. <laughs> Rami Malik. <laughs> <laughs> Rami Malik would be probably be Casey crazy. Affleck. Casey yeah. Affleck could be a fucking nasty Joker, <laughs> dude. Casey Affleck could be like a, hi- a hidden, t- unbelievable Joker, like a fucking Will Smith. S- Go fuck yourself. Think about that. I guess he is an Oscar-winning actor now. Isn't there a whole conspiracy thing about the Oscars being rigged or something? Yeah, I mean they are, but they're yeah. like, but like, here's here's my it's view. It's rigged on it. the same way, like you know, a baseball game with toddlers is rigged. You know what I mean, like. Mm, I wouldn't say that. As long as you're so putting here, in the here's effort. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You can Eventually win an Oscar. Win. You can win an Oscar and not take it home. You can win an Oscar and not get because you have to buy it. You have to buy your Oscar. Yeah, it's like fifty grand, isn't it? I don't Something know about like fifty, but it's it's like a few thousand dollars. Yeah. But to win an Oscar, you have to pay for it usually to actually own the trophy. Uh, now you can win the award and be an Oscar-winning actor or cinematographer, yeah, or whatever, uh, and not take it home. But most of them campaign really hard to win their Oscars. Most of the well, time, Bojack kind of showed you the side of that. You yes, know I mean? and, and that, you like yeah. I never knew that until yeah. watching Bojack, which is. But it's amazing funny. that Bojack Horseman really shines a light on Hollywood yeah. in that direction. But like, it is a very it's a real thing. You campaign, but it's like campaigning for anything. Like, if you want to be the mayor of a town, you don't just 
win it off of like you shake hands hopes and, and kiss babies. You yeah. gotta shake hands and kiss babies. And same thing with the Oscars. We gotta kiss now, hands and shake babies. Is it ever rigged where they totally just buy their win? Yeah. Probably. Probably. But I mean every once in a while you have a pref- like when Joaquin Phoenix won for the Joker, yeah. No one even questioned it. No, no one that year, no one had a chance. Mm-hmm. Like who who was nominated? <coughs> I think that was the year uh, The Way of Water came out. Or not The Way of Water. No, that not was, the way that of was water. a few years uh, after that. No, no, The Shape of Water, whatever it is, where no, she falls in love with That was 2017. Person. 2020. Oscar. 2019, wasn't it? Oh, that's when Joker came that's out, but the Joker. Oscar would have been in 2020. 2020 Oscar winner, best lead actor. Who is he against? Okay. Wait, nominees. Um, Antonio Banderas for Pain and Glory, Leonardo DiCaprio, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Adam Driver, Marriage Story. What about La La Land? Jonathan Price. Oh, that was a few years before that. Yeah. So, yeah, you've got Jonathan Price for The Two Popes, Adam Driver for Marriage Story, Leonardo DiCaprio for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Antonio Once Banderas for Pain and Glory. I didn't see Two Popes for Pain and Glory. I saw the other two. Adam Driver's great in Marriage Story. He does give one of the best performances of his career. Leonardo DiCaprio is great always in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Always great, though. Um, that's probably the only one that I would say even stood a chance, but I didn't even hear anything about Two Popes or Pain and Glory. Yeah. Like, those were barely even mentioned. I remember when you put just Joaquin Phoenix's Joker up against probably anybody from the last 10 years, it's a close fight. We we just did like we had just started doing the podcast. Wait, hold on. Before we get off topic of what yeah. we were discussing, no, no, I, well, those years, yeah, where that performance happens, where there's the Matthew McConaughey and Dallas Buyers Club, yeah, or the Heath Ledger's Joker, yeah. or Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, those years, I don't think you can afford to try and buy an Oscar because yeah. there is an, a performance that is so obviously going to win, yeah, that no one else stands a chance. No. No. Well, and it's like that year, like you were talking about, like we never really talked about any of the other nominees. That year we started the podcast. And like I think for the first like couple months we talked about the Joker. Like on and it was off. great. Like, you it's know. a great movie. And we saw it. Like, it's the greatest times. movie that I'll never watch again. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a tough watch. It's a very painful movie to yeah. view. <laughs> I saw it fan. like three times and I, I saw like, I did see it two times. Yeah. I watched it twice. I watched it again in Discord with my friends when uh two of them yeah. had not seen it. We watched Maybe it. Maybe I've seen it four times because I watched it with April. I went on a date. Uh a separate time and watched it and then I've seen it I want to say I saw it two t- I think I saw it two times with you in theaters there's no yeah. way you and me saw it twice I only saw it one time in theaters okay so I definitely saw it one time with you and I feel like there's another time I saw it I might just went to go rewatch it with somebody. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember. Either way, I wanted to rewatch it because there was like stuff that like, you know, after the twist, you're kind of like I wanted to see, go back and see, you know, what all, like, kind of hints at that, you know? Yeah. Anytime there's a twist, you're like, I got to go back and see it, you know? And you're like, mm, nope, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I told you one time I was going to go see it, and you're like, oh, cool, have fun. Message me when it's over. <laughs> yeah, go fuck yourself. <laughs> have a good time. <laughs> I just had a really cool idea in that conversation mm-hmm. about the future of... Are you going to go see the second one? Jo- yeah, of course. Okay. I mean, you know, uh, what's her name? Lady Gaga is going to be Harley yeah. Quinn. Which I'm really excited. She can act. Did I you ever too. watch uh, House of Gucci? Yeah. Was, um, I watched it with you and Amanda. It's when the day we met Amanda. We went and watched was House it? of Gucci together. You, me, and She's her. She's so hot in that movie. That whole cast is hot in that movie. Yeah, no, that's A- true. Anthony. Everybody. Or, like, uh, Al Pacino is <laughs> hot in that movie. It's like, they were like, <laughs> let's make everybody Even stupid Jared, attractive. Even Jared Leto is playing a fat guy balding, and he's hot. everyone's hot in that movie. That movie's amazing. It's a bunch of Italians. I'm Italian, dude. It's my people. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, like, complained about the fucking accents. No, there's a lot of different Italian accents. That yeah. movie's amazing. It's a great movie, actually. <laughs> it's such a good movie. Yeah. I love that I movie. love that movie. That's a great movie. I want to go home and rewatch that movie. <laughs> It's, it's a fun <laughs> movie, and she is unbelievable she's, in it. Yeah, she's Adam amazing. Driver's the the fucking oh yeah, he's great. Him and Jared Leto and Al Pacino go buh, nan and that Jeremy Irons. Everyone in that movie <laughs> is great. Everyone's, everyone's on their ang- ang- Everyone's on their. That's the first that time I ever watched La- Lady Gaga act, and I was like, he went right from House of Gucci to playing fucking Ferrari. Now he's playing Ferrari. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Adam is. Driver's playing Ferrari now. I, but I w- he's just playing all the Italians. I <laughs> never saw Lady Gaga act before, but and I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna feel about this because I'm used to seeing her. You know, oh really? Stuff. Yeah. She's really good in *A Star Is Born*. Like, 
Really, I see. Really I never good. watched that, but I know she's, she's in a couple of seasons of American Horror Story, and yeah, I, I saw some clips that of too. that, and that looked good. So I was, that kind of put me at ease. But this is the first time like seeing like a full thing that she's in. She's a really and good actress. It was great. That's what happens when you're a damaged artist. You can you can <laughs> act. It's like poker. Pl- like I, I s- there's a lot of poker well, players where I'm like, if you guys like, so she put to on her poker face. Fuck you. Anyway. Can I keep that? <laughs> no, it's mine. Oh. I hope it's okay. <laughs> I have one of yours that you gave me somewhere. Yeah, just, just, just waiting for a thing to... S- <laughs> your fridge. <laughs> oh, I didn't want to go bad. <laughs> I threw a cigar at Creighton. <laughs> <laughs> he said he got a cigar. Oh, no, no. It's I actually it. not a bad place to put I smoked it uh, at Quint. No, I did. I smoked it at Quentin's housewarming party. Okay. Her and Bradley Cooper. Yeah, no, they are. Oh, they're yeah. In yeah. A Star Is Born, they are a they're incredibly. In love, yeah. They are in love yeah. in real life. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the trailer for Maestro? The new no, movie he's I doing. It looks really good. Yeah, he's playing. He's is playing. he a raccoon? In it? I only watch it if he's a CGI raccoon. <laughs> he should have got an Oscar for honestly for Guardians Three. The most unrecognized field of talent in the Oscars over the last 20 years Boy is m- motion capture. Oh, mocap. Mocap performances. Even Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper's a mocap performance. Like, h- Does he do mocap for us? So he does b- him and uh, Sean Gunn do. Sean oh, okay. Gunn is the on, like, in, uh, in shot mocap performance. He's mm-hmm. playing Rocket's body with all the characters in the moments. Really? Sean Gunn plays Rocket in the scenes. When so Chris when Pratt is Bradley standing there, Pratt, Bradley, uh, Bradley Cooper, Cooper does the face mocap and like fight mocap and close up mocap yeah. behind the scenes when he's reading his lines. Huh. He does all of it, and he gives one of the best performances in the fucking what's Marvel Cinematic Universe. What's his name <laughs> that uh, plays Davy Jones? Should have fucking Bill won Nye. Yeah, Bill, Bill Nye, Nye should have won an Oscar for that. Bill Nye should have won an Oscar for Davy Jones. Andy Serkis should have fucking six Oscars yeah. between his Lord performances as Gollum, Caesar, King Kong, the chef from King Kong. <laughs> like that motherfucker. He does it all. If there was a cinematic Mount Rushmore, Andy Serkis is on it. Yeah. He's the fucking, he's the Teddy Roosevelt or the Andrew, uh, yeah. Andrew, Abraham Lincoln. This is George uh, Washington. I almost said Bush. Of <laughs> cinema? <laughs> yeah. Who's the George Bush of cinema? <laughs> The George Bush of cinema is the uh, second one. Not the is G- George Bush of c- <laughs> the second George Bush <laughs> of cinema is uh, uh, fucking what's his name who does the Transformers movies? Uh, Michael Bay. Michael Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Bay is the George Bush of cinema. Oh uh, god! <laughs> but I mean, well, okay. Like, what are, are we talking actors only, or are we talking like people to do with cinema? Uh, in general, I think I'll, I'll for be me, fine with generalizations. For me, it probably goes from left to right. Of Mount Rushmore? Yeah. It probably goes... Kubrick. Okay. As Washington? Spielberg. Andy Serkis. Brad Pitt. What Brad Pitt is not the best actor in the world. And what? he's not the most... Known, but he is so recognizable and Hitchcock? so always giving his A game. There's only four spots, man. I can't. I can't do it all. I can't. There's. There's probably a short list of twenty that could yeah. be on that list at any moment. For me personally, Andy Serkis will always be on that list. Yeah. Mine and Spielberg be, will always be on that list. Mine would be Hitchcock, Spielberg, Nolan, and it's all directors. <laughs> well, like you got to think like. There is the writing does a lot of the work too. You know yeah, what I mean? That's true. And the direction. Uh <laughs> and then To I me wa- the last one's gonna be an actor. It's probably gonna be like like you said, maybe Andy Circus. I can see Andy Circus in that lineup. Well the problem with Andy Circus to most people is that they don't recognize him. No. <laughs> That's the worst the saddest part about Andy Circus. He's Serkis. the Tony Hawk of most. He's the Tony <laughs> Hawk of Hollywood <laughs> of the whole fucking cinematic universe. <laughs> I saw all this of meme. cinema. I saw this meme the other day. I was like, I'm gonna tell my kids this is Tony Hawk, and it was just a picture. It was of a her. picture of Tony <laughs> Hawk. Yeah, it was so great. <laughs> 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 so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Uh, <laughs> but um, <laughs> shut the. <laughs> hey, 
archaeologists years from now will find that meme and be like, that's just so young. I don't get it. <laughs> and then we're all going to be like, you had to be there, man. <laughs> Nobody knew who this guy was, and he was famous. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. They only know the name. Cursed with fame, but forever a forgettable face. <laughs> when do you have to go do that thing? They should be coming around too. It's too. Are now. you going with me? So that way I can it's just two take o'clock you to right now. Oh, well, they haven't called yet. They said they call when they're on the way. Oh, okay, yeah. that's good. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can. Like, I and care. then I'll just take you to work from there. I don't care. It shouldn't take. I mean, you know. I mean, what I'm asking is, do you want to wrap up now? Yeah. Uh, where are we at? Okay. We're at 59. Let's make it an hour. Say something silly. <laughs> Andy Circus should play the penguin. <laughs> Oh wait, no wait. He's he's <laughs> fucking Alfred now. He can't. He can't. I, I was gonna say in the '66 <laughs> one with Kevin Hart and Dwayne. Oh Tyler. yeah, that would be hilarious. Uh, who did we decide was the Joker in that? Uh, <laughs> Rami Malek. Rami Malek. <laughs> maybe. Rami Malek. Maybe. <laughs> Rami Malek could be a good one. We were like Matthew McConaughey <laughs> could be a all good right, Joker. All right, all right. <laughs> hey Harley. What was just Mike Myers again? <laughs> Danny DeVito plays Harley Quinn. <laughs> Wait, he's in a Batman movie. Fuck. Can't be. <laughs> well, no, that would be even funnier. <laughs> like, he just plays the penguin again, but a different one? Or uh, what's his name? The guy that plays Dennis on uh, It's Always Sunny could be the Joker. <laughs> he might give an unironically good performance. <laughs> That's what I'm Joker. saying. Like, if you, Him like, or Charlie Day. If you have like the whole thing be kind <laughs> of a comedy and then play the if Joker If you just got straight. Charlie Day summoning the version of Charlie wi- uh, who... <laughs> Who sits on Santa's lap and asks Santa if he fucked his mom? <laughs> did you like, fuck my mom? Santa? Did you fuck my mom, Santa? It's that time of year again, boys. Did you fuck my mom? <laughs> ah, and he bites his fucking neck like a vampire. God damn it, that's a funny show. Oh, with that said, anybody who's still watching, have a great day. We're about to dip out. We will be returning to our halfway, sort of, kind of regular schedule program. Yeah, we probably <laughs> at least one or I'm two off podcasts. Saturday, so we could do one Saturday. I'm down. And then I close tomorrow night, so we could do like a late one tomorrow. Late one tomorrow. I'm down for both. Yeah. Or we could do one tomorrow problem. morning, really, if you get home. That really just depends on yeah. tonight. <laughs> we'll see about that. Tonight is the night. Yes. Tonight is the night. Are you going to do your radio voice? Can I do my radio voice? For what? Just right now? Yeah. Do Somewhere that. in the world. That's your radio voice? No. You couldn't do that for more than 10 minutes before I could it hurt it. your voice. I, no, it's not hurting my voice. It's just I'm trying not to laugh. It. <laughs> It it does it does hurt your voice more than you think. It's hard to do a voice like that for a long time that in isn't your normal world. voice. I'm just gonna talk like this from here on out. If I did it, I'm it would be. I'm gonna go into work and be like, have you "What did se- you do today?" Have you ever seen the SNL bit with yeah. Jimmy Fallon and? Where were the other drugs going? You don't know what I, you said. Yeah, and didn't know what I was talking the about. The SNL bit with Jimmy Fallon. Well, well okay, which one? What the am one I talking where about? Where he's doing a voice and he hurts his voice. No, oh, no. Okay. Good job. Okay. Good, Thank good you. try. <laughs> good context clues. You tried to really be a detective right there. You fucking idiot. He does an SNL bit with. Uh, 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 fucking Matt Damon's best friend. What's his name? Uh, Ben Affleck. Oh, ben I was Affleck. About to say, which one? <laughs> ben Affleck and Jimmy Fallon play radio DJs, and he has Ben Affleck's character on his show because they were friends in college, and they're doing their k- radio characters. Yeah. And they start to fight over their characters because their radio characters. Back in the day when you had a DJ, you did voices for yeah. people that weren't there. So, like, he would be five different people, and all of his people are the same people <laughs> as Jimmy Fallon. So, they're just sitting there arguing about their characters, and they both have the same exact radio voice. They're both uh, fucking, it's Kitty from Z105. Like, it's like that the whole time, yeah. and it's fucking, we have to watch it after this. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> we'll watch it real quick. Anyway, with that said. You guys have a great day. It's been the Shirts Off Podcast, Season 2, Episode 105, here on Twitch, Twitch? TV. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie Boy. Z105. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dashboard.twitch.tv. Coming forward slash you. Ya. Forward slash Charlie Boy. Forward yeah. slash stream. Dash manager. <laughs> Later. Forward slash. Forward slash. Forward slash. Death by a thousand for slashes. <laughs> thanks for watching. God, we have to have a segment where we just do radio voices. Okay, you guys have a good day. We'll catch you later. Good day, Crane.